Hi, my name is Sean Madovetsky, and I'm a course lecturer here at the Schulich School of Music. Today we're going to be looking at rhythmic applications inspired by the music of North India. Before we get started, I'd like to do a little introduction to the tabla. Tabla is the principal percussion instrument that's played in the north of India. What's really interesting is we don't learn through sheet music, we learn through an oral tradition. Every sound has, like a solfege syllable, uh, we call it bol, a vocal syllable attached to each sound. Na, tin, tun, te, ke, and ge. Then when we have combination sounds, two sounds together, because we can't speak two sounds simultaneously, we have new syllables for those combination sounds. So da, dhin, and dhe. Now you could view these as letters of an alphabet. Once we know some letters, we can put them together and form some words. So for example, tete, tirekita, kitataka, tirekitataka. Now some longer words, dha tirekitataka, taka tirekitataka, dhere dhere kitataka, tinna kitataka. Now, once you know some words, we can make a sentence. And so on. So to give you an idea of what a composition might sound like, I'll speak it, then I'll play it, and then I'll speak and play it at the same time. So before we get into any specific musical examples, let's talk about the rhythmic framework in which the music takes place. We talk about rhythmic cycles, we call them tal or tala. These can be organized in lots of different ways, but the first one that anyone will learn in North Indian classical music is called tintal. And tintal is a 16-beat time cycle divided 4-4-4-4. Four, 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 four. Sounds familiar, right? Like four bars of 4-4. Four, four. Now, what's unique is we don't count like this in Indian classical music. We use a system of what are called claps and waves, which are just upside-down claps. And the pattern for tintal goes like this. Clap, pinky, ring, middle. Clap, pinky, ring, middle. Wave, pinky, ring, middle. Clap, pinky, ring, middle. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, one. And this is something that you want to practice whenever you can, talking with your friends, walking down the street, and you need to be able to keep the time while you're doing something else, right? Because before we start making music, we need to be able to keep time. That's the most basic thing in any music making, right? 14, 15, 16, 1. Just as a little aside, another way of counting tintal, this would be a more of a personal way, you can count on your hand. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 1. Now that we have our tintal, let's do something with it. So what I propose is a little permutation exercise. Permutations are a very common strategy uh, in improvising on tabla. And what permutations mean are just taking some items and rearranging the order of them. So a very common phrase, takita 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 takadimi, takita 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 takadimi. Three, 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 four. Right? Very common, comes up in a lot of different musical situations. So how many takitas do we have? We have four takitas and one takadimi. So all we want to do is to rearrange these into different orders, different sequences. And in all, there are five different versions that are possible. If we view the takita as A and the takadimi as B, then we have A, 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 B, A, 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 B, A, 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 B, A, 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 B, A, 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 and then B, A, 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 A. So let's try this in a 16th note subdivision, so four per beat. 
Now, why are we doing this? One, it can give us some new rhythmic ideas when we're improvising. Maybe some of those permutations were obvious to you, and maybe some weren't. Maybe there's some possibilities there that you wouldn't have thought of before. So by exploring all the permutations, you can find all the different versions, and maybe some things that weren't intuitive now become part of your repertoire, and it becomes part of what is intuitive for you. Also as a way of technically challenging yourself or working on something that might be technically difficult. So rather than just playing it through forward, in the usual way, let's rearrange the different elements, make it even more difficult. Then when you come back to the original version, it's much, much simpler. Also, you've gained new ideas, you've technically tried things in new ways, uh, which can always be uh, valuable for you. I hope that you've enjoyed this little exploration of North Indian rhythm. Thanks for watching.